Hi everyone, Bree Johnson here, and I'm going to show you a couple different ways to move your arms in warrior two pose. And really this can be applied to any of our standing poses. And why would we want to move our arms in warrior two? Isn't it always just like this? Exactly. Because if we're always doing the exact same thing all the time, that's only going to be good until it's not. Meaning that your body really thrives, your muscles, all your fascia, all of your things that move you really thrive on a variety and diversity of movement. So if we've been holding our arms like this in Warrior Two for 10 months, a year, five years, 10 years, then certain muscles are going to get more developed and more work than other ones. So today's tutorial is going to be giving you a bunch of different creative ways to have your arms really enjoy a fabulous new experience, wake up more parts of us, and really just get out of the box a little bit. Okay, so let's go right into warrior two. We'll bend one knee, we'll bend the, allow your other leg to extend straight out. Now, typically we know that the arms come up like so in warrior two, which is great, but let's add the variety now. So one of the very simplest things that I often do in my classes or in my own practice is because most of Warrior Two has always been taught with the palms facing down, instead, let's just simply externally rotate the upper arms. So that's option one. You've simply moved the arms into an externally rotated position. Now, you can keep your Warrior Two pose like this, and that could be perfect just for you. Another time or another variation that I like to do is add internal and external rotation. So we're actually moving our arms in an internal, externally rotated position back and forth, getting a little bit more variety of movement for your shoulder joint. Your shoulder joints and all the joining muscles love this. Good. And then you can relax your arms. <clears throat> now another variation that we can do is adding more movement. So let's review real quick. External rotation, hold. Option two, external rotation, and then the internal. External, internal. Option three would be allowing this back arm to get a full breadth of movement. Let's start with an overhead movement. So inhale, bring your arm overhead, and then your torso, your upper back, rotates as your arm reaches forward, and then you can sweep it out in front of you facing the original position, and then again, overhead, reach in front, out. So you're creating this nice big circle, and it's not just for that shoulder joint. Now you feel your upper body and your upper back get a little bit of a nice twist here in that thoracic spine. Good, so there we go. There's another option. I'm gonna switch my legs again. Now, Let's do a little bit different. So similar but different. We'll start in the externally rotated position again. I'm going to now bring my arm about halfway. So it's all the way out to the side here. I'm gonna bring it halfway now and then up and then down. And then I'm moving it in front of me and then up and then down. And then moving it past the midline a little bit. Up, down, forward, up down. So now I'm getting really creative in my ranges of movement for this back arm and then we'll go back the same way. While I'm doing this, I'm also staying in the externally rotated position because I think for most people, external rotation is a position that we don't often stay in. And then back. Good. There we go. Let's do one more. I'm going to switch my legs again so that everything stays even. Now, really, when you're learning this, and hopefully this is just simply giving you ideas and inspiration, a jumping off point for you to come up with your own creative ways to move your arms. So now we're gonna to try to move, for this last variation, the arms together. So what we're gonna do is bring the arms forward, externally rotate, and then stay in that external rotation, bring your arms out to the side, forward. Now the thing is, What's a little bit different about this one, as my arms come out to, to the side and together, is that I'm actually trying to keep my shoulder blades from moving. So that means my shoulder blades are staying wide apart on my back, and then I'm, that means I'm moving, driving the movement right directly into my shoulder joint. 
So you feel like you kind of have to actively extend your shoulder blades in that protracted and that wide position, and then only allow your arms to go as far as they can without the shoulder blades bringing them back. And then like so. Very simple ideas, nothing crazy, but again, moving out of the box, giving your shoulder joints, which are one of your most mobile joints in your body, the opportunity to move in as variety of ways as possible is perfect. And we're simply using Warrior Two as our base for a new way to move. So you can just stand in Tadasana and do all this fun stuff with your arms or incorporate it into other yoga poses. The sky's the limit. Don't be afraid to get out of the box to support the sustainability and long-term health of your body. Thanks everyone.